Hello, welcome again. Today I will be briefly talking about another important post-colonial studies uh, concept, and that is dia diaspora or diaspora, which is used specifically in post-colonial studies, but of course it's a historical term. Traditionally, diaspora coming from the uh, Greek lexicon, right, meant the scattering of the people, mostly Greek people voluntarily or involuntarily spread across the world, but across European continent uh, with an intent to colonize or uh, work in other parts of the world. And that act or process was called diaspora. But later on, as the Old Testament the Torah and others are translated into Greek and Latin, it significantly comes to signify the specific Jewish experience of diaspora, the forceful removal of the Jewish population from the Levant, and the, the first diaspora even that precedes that, and the scattering of the Jewish people all over the world. So diaspora traditionally in the modern vocabulary has always been used to signify and represent the Jewish collective experience of having been evicted from, from their place and then sc scattered across the world. And if you look at the Jewish historiography in most of the times, the history is recorded within different diasporas, the first diaspora, the second diaspora. In post-colonial studies, when we mention diaspora literature or diasporic authors, what we tend to think about and keep in mind is the works produced by those authors who live in what were the former metropolitan centers, former colonial centers or nations that were part of the colonizing process, who lived there, but write their works with some kind of insights about their native countries or the native countries of their parents, or at least deal with the issues that relate to their lived place, the metropolitan cultures, and its engagement with the former colonies or the country where they either themselves might have come from or where their parents might have come from. And in that sense, then, since their work deals with these issues of having come from elsewhere or remembering another culture, we loosely include the works of these authors into post-colonial studies, right? Like people like Mohsen Hamid, Parthi Mukherjee, um, a lot of other um, writers who live in both the countries, in their adopted country and in their native country. So most of the times, it's literature produced by authors and writers who originally might have come from a former colony and then moved to England, moved to United States, Canada, and then write about the experience of being an expat in that country, but also draw on the historical and cultural heritage of their native country of origin. And it's a deeply political thing to consider because there are always objections to the writings of the diasporic authors, especially from the native communities who sometimes question their right to represent their native communities. And there are other connotations of diaspora and diasporic literature as well, and also politics. There's a wonderful essay by ben uh, Benedict Anderson in one of his later books in which he talks about diaspora nationalism where these diasporic communities in London or in New York, they kind of develop a collective political identity. But the interesting thing that he talks about is that most of these diasporic communities tend to favor more conservative aspects of their own mother countries or their own original native countries. And that would be something interesting for you to consider. But for the purpose of post-colonial studies, though highly sort of contested, diaspora always mean a population 
of natives who had either moved to the metropolitan centers, have lived there, have developed communities there, and then the diaspora literature or diasporic, diasporic literature is literature produced by these individuals who live in the European centers, in the former colonial uh, centers, but write about issues related to either their experience in those countries as so-called outsiders or rely on the historical and cultural heritage of their own native country. And the question of their inclusion into post-colonial studies is debatable. I personally include them in my courses as well as in my writing. But do keep in mind that that is, you know, contested. So overall, I hope this explains the historical um, understanding of the concept of diaspora itself, but also its usage within post-colonial studies. And I, this is all I've got this time. Um, I will certainly see you next time. And until then, thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this content, please do uh, subscribe below so that I can, you know, you, you keep getting notifications of what's coming next. Thank you so much. See you next time.